This is Hard Parking, brought to you by Wright Honda and Wright Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Still on location, recording this from Hamilton, Ontario. That's about an, an hour outside of Toronto, uh, an hour away from London, London, Ontario, where uh, Bob Chad is, Mr. Bob Marshall. It's the Wednesday before Father's Day, and uh, you know when I told when I told my daughter who lives with us that I was going to be gone, she's like, "He's going to be gone for Father's Day," and then even my wife was like, "You're going to be gone for Father's Day." Yeah, but you're coming with me. My wife got into town earlier. She is in Toronto awaiting me tomorrow evening. That's why I'm recording this now because I don't know, you know, I don't know through the rest of the weekend if I'm going to have an opportunity to record anything. You know, it's kind of our time. So a little bit about Toronto. We were both here before. We were both here in 2004 when we got married. We decided to go to Toronto for our honeymoon. Now, I know it's not this super luxurious spot. But it's really nice, and we didn't have a lot of money. And we're like, you know, where can we go? We don't have a lot of money. You know, somewhere that's a little different. Everyone goes to Cabo. Everyone goes to Mexico. Everyone goes to blah, 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 blah. And we decided to go to Toronto, and we had a great time. And this was the first time back. You know, what is this, 2022? God, it's holy crap. (laughs) What's the math? Is that 18 years? Whatever the math is, it's a long time. Let me put it that way. And holy crap. So when I flew in a little over two weeks ago, it was like, wow, this was, this was Toronto. Like, I don't remember anything about Toronto other than the CN Tower, but I remember, I think we liked it. We went to some castle. That was cool. We went to the zoo. That was cool. But it was kind of dirty. But, you know, a lot of times areas around an airport are kind of shitty, industrial, whatever. But I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Looking forward to uh, rendezvousing with my wife and having a good weekend. Like I mentioned, you know, Father's Day is coming up. Well, actually, let me get to Father's Day a little bit after this message from Four Wheel Online. Jay Finning here, and I want to tell you guys about Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. Their truck products cover everything you need to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. And if you need a tire and wheel package, head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. So visit them online at Four Wheel Online or call them at 813 769 2451. Again, that's Four Wheel Online, the number four wheel online. So, as I was saying, a little bit about Father's Day. Every year, it's, it's almost like an anniversary of this show. I mean, I started this show in. in eh, mid 2019 and you know it really 2020 when the world stopped i feel like my father's day episode was one of the greatest episodes and the feedback suggests that it made me real it made me relatable it made life relatable and that's what i try to be and so feedback from the last show i hear that it's good every once in a while for me to have a show like this where it's not so i wouldn't say regimented or planned but this is this is back to basics. As I said on the previous episode, this is like I'm recording an episode from a hotel room, which is where I started off. And I haven't done this in a long time. I haven't done this since I lost my job in April of 2020, working for a one hospital system out of Rancho Mirage, California. And even then, I remember moving around like, okay, well, what room do I want? Well, let me find a room in the back of the apartment complex. Apartment. Let me find a room in the back of the hotel complex to minimize you know, noises from outside. Because even then I was kind of trying to focus in on, you know, getting the, the best sound, but didn't have a great microphone. I had an all right one. You know, and as I mentioned before, during that employment stint is when I actually recorded a segment from the gate at the airport waiting. And that was, you know, not, not very good. But going back to Father's Day, a lot has changed in the last couple of years. And, you know, I've been thinking about my father a lot recently. And I feel like one of these days I'm going to think about him and just start breaking down, but not yet. You know, as I said, when he'd passed in October, October 20th of 2020, in a weird way, I was kind of waiting for it. Every time my phone rang, I was like, oh, is this it? And I had no reason to be like that. I just, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't believe in that whole expect the worst and you won't be disappointed. And a lot of people do that. I just, I just don't. But I'm always just always wondering, you know, what's what's happening next? You know, what's going on? What are the timelines of my life? Who's getting older? 
I don't know. I've just been thinking about him lately. I do miss him. You know, but he had a good life. He lived long enough to see me get married and have kids. And he even got to see, you know, his great grandkid, Zeke. It was hard for me to remember that. I had to, I had to pause and think. You know, my sister-in-law, she took a photo of my father and I working on something in the, um, in the living room. We did a bump out together where I eventually installed the TV in a, in a, you know, a gas fireplace. But, you know, I literally have that labeled in my email as the last picture of me and dad. And I have it in my camera roll too, but you know, life is all about life. All life is all about moving on. You know, we don't get forever. Like I said before, and you know, this, this time around, I'm sure my kids are like, you know, what's up with dad? He's not here. Like they get it. My son, Marcelo gets it. I think my daughter, Jalene gets it, but man, even amidst certain pockets of disappointment, you look back at the kids and you're like, man, I'm, I'm proud. I'm happy to have been their father as I remain their father. Not to say that, you know, anything has happened. But you get to see the kids grow up. You get to see them, you know, kind of alter from smart ass, know it all, teenager to idealistic early teenager. I mean, they're both like mid teens. But it's just you get to see that. And then and then it all makes sense. You feel vindicated. All those times you were an asshole because your wife didn't want to be one. All those times you kind of pressed a little harder and you start seeing those lessons come through fruition. It feels good. It's like, that's right. That's right, motherfucker. You know, my son used to always ask shit. My my wife would give an an answer immediately. And we would get into it, my wife and I. Why do you have to be such an asshole? Can't you just tell him? I'm like, well, I mean, the tools are right there. I can remind him that the tools are there, but I'm not always going to be there to tell him the tools are there. You need to use what's given to you. He'd be like, hey, guys, how do you you spell bus? And my wife would be like, B-U-S. And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. What does it sound like? What else sounds like b- butterfly, butta, buttocks, butter cake, bus, B-U-S, bus. Do you know Gus, G-U-S? Do you know gas, G-A-S, bus? And so she would get so mad because I would challenge him. And now when he comes to me, he already knows everything. He's like, hey, uh, my car's making a noise. It's doing this weird squeal. Before I say anything, I looked it up online. I, I read like a bunch of different sources and, and watched a bunch of videos on YouTube. And I think it's this, this, or this. Can you take a look at it? I'm just like, fuck yeah, I can take a look at it. You did your research. But he did tell me uh, a few months ago, he's like, man, I used to bring my car over here with hoping that, hoping that you would just take over and do it for me. I was like, yeah. I'm like, you have that radar. You kind of get it. But you know what's also funny is on this trip, I actually miss my grandson. Like that little son of a bitch, he's spoiled as fuck. And he lives with us. But man, when he's on, he's on. And there's a few times he's actually called me dad. And I've had to, he's like, daddy. And I've had to uh, correct him. Like, no, papa. Papa. Yeah. And and I say it like he's a little, like he's a Micronian, but he's like three and a half. He's on the four-year-old side of three instead of the two-year-old side of three, which is a big difference. But that's how he says, you know, he addressed me. Papa. And it's... It's kind of this weird thing. Like his dad would call like once a week and we would always encourage that he talks to Sadrach, his father. We're like, Hey, your father's calling. Tell him you love him. Tell him you miss him. And Zeke doesn't want to have anything to do with him. It's, I would say it's bizarre and baffling, but we kind of think we know why little kids don't come up with shit on their own. They emulate. So if they have anything bad to say, they've heard it from someone else. And I will leave that. I'll leave the specifics out, but, you know, one of the things that I always say to kind of defend the situation is, look, man, he's very, because this is true, he's very particular. He knows what he wants, doesn't want. He's oddly for particular for someone his age. He might have a little something, you know, a little autism or something, I don't know. But I tell people, if he doesn't want to talk to you, he doesn't care who you are. If I call him, if my wife calls him, if his own mother calls him, he doesn't give a shit. If he ain't dealing with you at the time, he does not give a shit. But I was talking to my wife, you know, earlier this week, and he's in the background. Hey, Papa. It's like, oh, wow. He actually wants to talk to me. So, I don't know. I guess he does give a shit. I guess that, uh, you know, I am the stable father figure-esque in his life. 
you know, I told my daughter, look, I don't want to, I don't want to raise any more freaking kids. I want to be grandpa because that's what I am. My wife doesn't embrace that. But at the end of the day, she doesn't want to be grandma. She wants to be Nana. But at the end of the day, I am, I'm grandpa. Any way you cut it. And he calls my mother-in-law, his grandma. I know, dude, that's your great grandma. Like my wife is your grandma. Like real talk. But I try to be responsible around them always. I'm a little, you know, I kind of, I discipline them a little bit, but not too much. Because at this age, I can be like, hey, listen to grandma. Hey, knock that shit out. Like he's, a few weeks ago, he's in the bathroom. My wife's giving him a bath and he, he was not having it. He was yelling and screaming and stomping, like stomping in the tub. And for those of you who, who don't know, I share a wall. My studio shares a wall with the upstairs restroom. So everything is amplified. So I'm sitting in my office. I'm probably working. I'm doing something. And I'm just like, oh. Fuck this motherfucker. So I get up and I walk in there. I'm like, hey, knock that out now. Knock it off. I'm going to give you a pow. And he like was all startled and just kind of stared at me. I think he stopped like one more time. And then that was it. So, you know, it's at the point where I have to apply my, my voice. The voice of God. Boy, I will rip you another asshole. I'll rip you as many assholes as I have to. But you know what else? I miss my dog. I miss Izzy. So Izzy is the voice you hear at the end of the podcast. At the very end. So where that came from, like it's the the last thing that plays on every episode. And it's always going to be the last thing that plays on every episode. Is I was doing, I think I was recording a demo for for Instagram. like Like on how to edit something. And he barked and I told him to shut up and he barked again. And I laughed because dogs always have, want to have like the last word. But I miss my dog. He's 14 and a half. He's going to be 15 in January. He's a Yorkie poo. He's five and a half pounds. I'm that dog owner where if he starts acting funny, I hit Google. I'm calling all the vets. I'm buying all these medicines and vitamins and shit off of Amazon, you know, No one else pays attention. I mean, my wife does stuff sometimes. My mother-in-law, she's the official assistant caretaker. My daughter could give two flying shits. In fact, I have to make sure I don't headbutt her or kick her in the teeth whenever my dog dies because she'll probably be like, I'm glad he's dead. I'm like, girl, I will fucking kick you the fuck out of my house disrespecting my third kid like that. But it's hard because you have to remember, still a dog. Like dogs, cats, they're like our family members for those of us who have them but they're still an animal and they're not a human. You know, I was listening to Adam and Dr. Drew Pinsky one time and and Dr. Drew had mentioned that because they were talking about situations where people abuse animals or people kill animals and stuff like that. And he goes, you know, the public is outraged and it's very disgusting, but at the end of the day, human versus animal. And I got to remember that because I told my wife, I was like, look, whenever Izzy passes, you better, you better, keep me as far away from that girl as possible because if she says something, I'm going to have to kill her. I'm going to have to do something. Because when I was coming out here, I was thinking about, there's a dog, Shadow. He's uh, He was half Siberian Husky and half Labrador, and I lived with him for almost a year, and that was the craziest fucking dog ever. And he did this weird move where he'd come up behind you, he'd throw his shoulder into the back of your knee, and he'd take his his front leg, and he'd wrap it around to the front like he's purposely trying to trip you. It was the weirdest takedown attempt move ever. It was this weird thing, and he was a puppy, so he did it naturally, and it was the most bizarre thing ever. But I was thinking about him the other day, and then, I, you know, within a day later, his owner posted on Facebook that he finally passed because I was doing the math in my head. I'm like, shit, you know, I wonder if Shadow is still with us because that was 2007. You know, Izzy came in 2008. Izzy's sister passed already. She passed a few months ago. Lucy, she's two years older. So it's coming. You know, it's coming. I know this was Father's Day, and you you feel like you're a father to your pets. You know what I mean? Got a couple more observations. I want to talk a little bit more more about uh, about Canada. And uh, I can recap my weekend next week. But again, I'm not going to have an opportunity to really record, so... Uh, After this word from Anchor, my voice, so you can tolerate it. So today at work, I got a text message 
And I'm going to be very cryptic with this because only the Patreons get to get this information. But I got a great bit of news that I've been waiting for. And it's been about, it's about time. You know, this was a May, June thing. And there was a delay. Although I'll, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I'm a little hesitant. The economy seems to be crashing. Stock markets are crashing. Um, cryptocurrency is crashing. Gas and everything else, interest rates are rising like freaking nuts. Airfare is up over 30%. Gas is up 100%-ish, maybe 70%. I don't know. Gas is way up. You know, a few episodes, a few a few months ago, I'm on record with Wes Tankersley, and we're talking about gas prices, and we're like, look, man, everybody's bitching about it. It's 10, 15 cents more, maybe 20 cents more. It's not, you're not going to not buy gas. We're all going through the same shit. Just shut the fuck up and buy your gas. But now, it's even worse. Now, instead of, let's say you go with 87 octane, instead of you paying 380, you're, you're paying 520. That's a big difference. If you're a pretentious fucker like me, you're buying 91 octane, unless it's a rental car. Rental cars only get 87. I don't give a fuck what the rental car is. But yeah, 91, even in Arizona, where it's a little cheaper than other places, especially cheaper than our next door neighbors to California, you know, we're creeping on $6, 620. And it's like, holy crap. It used to cost me $78 to fill my tank. Now it cost me over $100, like $115. Thank God I hardly ever leave the house or get gas. But, you know, times are changing. Cool bit of news the other day. So when we went to Cabo, and even, you know, on the way here originally, he was like, well, you got to get, get a negative test before you can come back to the United States, which I think is really funny because the U.S. says, you know what? No more face mask on air, airplanes. You know, no more face mask on United States airports. It's at your discretion. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, no one can make you do it. Except for if you want to get back into the United States or if you want to get into the United States for some other country, it was a mandated COVID test. But the other day, the United States lift the COVID for international arrivals. You don't have to take, I don't have to take a COVID test. Which is pretty funny because I don't feel very good. I feel kind of sickly. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, COVID or just the change in temperature, the lack of sleep. I don't get any good sleep anymore because I'm working 7 to 7, like I said before, or 7 a.m. to 7 p. or 7 p. to 7 a. And that, that's, that's taxing, man. You're trying to sleep and you finally get to sleep and housekeeping. Or it's the maintenance guy, even though I have a do not disturb on the door. Anyway, I don't know if I said it last time. Actually, I know I said it. I'm going to say it again. This Wi-Fi fucking sucks. I can't get shit done. But on the bright side, I don't have to take a COVID test before I go back home. One of the things that uh, I kind of forgot about is eating alone. Sometimes when I'm traveling, you know, you go and look to see, okay, what's the... What the it's rare that I'm... Act okay, hold up. So, although I used to travel all the time... I was always working. You get on site late Sunday. You work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You fly home Thursday night. And you're home Friday. When you're covering a go live, which I've done before, but it's been a while, which is when we implement new software and we have 24-7 coverage and everybody from every application is working either all night or all day. So what's, what's kind of new and different is you wake up and you have all day. You can go to breakfast, you can go to lunch, you can do whatever you want. And I find myself just like sitting in the room lollygagging until the very last minute. Then I might go somewhere to eat. But my sleep schedule is so screwed up, I forget to eat. It's like, it's my day off. I get up at 11, 30, 12. I fucking slum around for a few hours and I start running errands. I can drive around like last time when I was looking for liquor. I look up and it's like, oh, it's five o'clock. I should probably eat something today. Usually it's just cafe Americano, but your brain gets out of whack. And so stuff like that kind of throws off your, your body chemistry. Obviously your nutrition, your sleep pattern, you get tired, you're going to get sick. So I always get sick when I travel, but this time more so than, than most. And I think it's due to just an overall lack of sleep. I still don't think I've had, I've been out here for two and a half weeks. I don't think I've had five hours of sleep in any given night. It's rough, but you know, roaming around looking for restaurants, 
the last time I worked at Go Live was when I was in New Jersey. Not a lot going on in Parsippany. Here, downtown Hamilton, there's actually more going on because there's breakfast spots everywhere, lunch spots, boutique spots, whatever. But it still feels weird. It feels weird sometimes going to eat by yourself. I feel weird eating by myself. Like, I'm more likely just to go to McDonald's and come back to the hotel than to go sit down somewhere and eat. And I used to like doing that. But it's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of mental practice. I've gone to a few places around here, and they're pretty good, but it's still kind of weird. Like, you sit at the bar. Either you're a creeper or you're a loner. I don't think people assume that you're from out of town until you don't have any money. Uh, Reference last episode. But it's just different. It's a welcome difference. Honestly. I didn't think I'd ever want to travel. Well, I don't think I could ever have traveled every single week like I used to. I need at least one week at home. Or maybe I need three weeks at home, one week on the road. Because that way, you know, I lose all my hotel points, lose all my car rental points, lose all my air miles. I lose the ability to eat whatever I want within reason and either have it taken care of or a chunk of it taken care of. I basically used to call it uh, eating at a discount. Let's say they say, okay, well, your daily food is only $55. It's like, all right. To some people, that's a lot of money. But let's say you go to McDonald's. Let's say you have lunch and then you have dinner. You can get a McDonald's breakfast. It's going to be like 10 bucks. You go to lunch, that's at least $12. Especially if you buy as a group. Everyone orders from cafe, whatever. Your order plus tip plus delivery, it's about $12, $13. So now you're at $23. So when you go out and eat, it's hard to spend less than $35 on a meal. It just is. You can go to TGI Fridays, which there isn't one here. And most of the menu items are going to be like twenty four ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, thirty two. You want a good steak, thirty eight. So it's really not a lot. So that's why I always consider it a discount. I miss discounted food because then you can go somewhere and you can spend one hundred twenty dollars on a steak, two glasses of wine, plus tip and tax. And that sounds like a lot of money because it kind of is, but. If your daily per diem is like $80, you know, now out of pocket, you spent like 40 bucks. You spent 40 bucks for a $60 steak and two $13 glasses of wine plus tip and tax. Not a bad deal. I always call it giving a discount. Some people that do what I do, they come into town, especially if it's a per diem. A per diem means you're getting paid whether you use it or not versus reimbursement which is we will reimburse you up to this amount, not a penny more, but we're not going to give you the money unless you use the money. So if you get a per diem, you bank that money, whether you use it or not. Well, I mean, if you use it, you're not, but you bank that money. So if you have a per diem at, you know, $75 a day, then every two days it's 150, you know, six days, it's $300. So you got $300 for food, even if you only spent $100 $100 for food throughout the course of the week. So what happens is a lot of people come into town, they go grocery shopping, and they're like, all right, well, I'm going to buy $80 worth of groceries. I'm going to cook it myself in my hotel room. Fuck that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to make you know $220 because I have $3 a week, $300 a week in per diem, and I've only spent 80 bucks. Yay. Yay for me. Not me. I'm going to go out. I'm going to spend that money. I'm going to have a good time. But eating alone, I don't know. Pros and cons. I don't miss it. Big question. Why doesn't anyone like Quebec? Like here in Canada, nobody likes Quebec. Nobody. Everybody says the same thing. I say, why don't you like Quebec? Because they think they're better than you. I mean, Quebec is like French. They're like the French that got rejected by the French. But they want to be, they want so badly to be French. I think they want like a, like a bridge, like a French bridge to go across to motherland France. And I don't know why. No one likes Quebec. No one. It's weird. The other day I was, uh, speaking of French, I think it was French, sitting down at the hotel uh, cafeteria dining area last night, editing, because I have to use their Wi-Fi to download stuff. And even then it still sucks, but it's not nearly as bad as it is up here in my room. But it's pretty bad. Took an hour to download 1.1 gigabyte, which is a long time. 
So I'm sitting there, and uh, the bartender serves me a drink. I get a double Glenfiddich. Neat. Not that I, I would have gotten on the rocks, but they didn't ask. So I was like, all right, cool, neat. But this girl and her friend, I guess it's, I don't know if it's her sister or her travel buddy. They were both young. They were, they were probably younger than my own kids. But uh, the Sandy Blonde, she was good looking, actually. I'm the creepy old man sitting there acting like I'm listening to music. But she sits down and she talks to the other girl and she has this thick accent. Thick, exotic accent. And it's like, it's a thin line between like super hot and super weird and annoying. Because as a guy, we like chicks with these accents, like these French, these Russian accents when they, when they speak English. It's like, oh my God, that's so hot. But she was looking at the menu, and she asked the bartender something like, and I'm, I'm going to suck at this, but it was like, do you have a strawberry daiquiri? I'm like, oh, she said strawberry daiquiri? And then I was listening to her, and she sounded like, the more she talked, the worse it was. I was like, oh, that's hot. Oh, 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 no. And then she got a phone call, and I couldn't, I thought she was talking in whatever language it was, because what happens is when people don't talk English naturally, they talk in whatever their native language is, the tone, even when they talk English. So it's like, or so I, was, I wasn't listening to the conversation, but I could hear it. And every once in a while, I'd hear like an English word slip out. And I decided that maybe she's, maybe she's from England. Because there's a podcast I used to listen to called A Pinch of Malt. And it's three brothers. And their audio quality sucks. But to hear those guys rip on each other, it's so funny. They just say shit so just different enough where it's interesting and funny. So instead of me saying, oh, you were walking down the street and you tripped and fell over the curb. They'll be like, oh, you tripped and fell over the curb, did you? So it's like the same thing but different. And that's kind of how she was talking like. Like remixing English. It's almost like when you listen to like a Jamaican and they're talking English, but you're like, huh? Wait, slow down. What? What was that? That's how it sounded. And it made me think about Snatch, one of my favorite movies, the Pikes, the Jippies, the Jippos, Brad Pitt's group, because he was a bare knuckle, the gypsy bare knuckle boxing champion. It started to sound like that. And once she started sounding like that. Then it went from like, wow, she's kind of cute to, oh my God, I would just fucking, I don't know. I, I would, I would tell her to wait for me and then never come back. I thought that was interesting. So the other day I ordered pizza. So Farisat, who is, uh, he's responsible for one of this show's sponsors. He also lives up here in this area half the time or he grew up here. He's like, oh dude, you have to go to pizza, pizza. Pizza, 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 man. You got to go to pizza, pizza. I was like, oh, I think I saw pizza, pizza the other day. Now, when I hear pizza, pizza, I'm old school. I think about Little Caesars in the 80s. Pizza, pizza. So the other day I was driving and I looked and I saw pizza, pizza. And that's, ex- that's exactly where my mind went to Little Caesars. And for a split second, I was like, oh, is that Little Caesars? They just call it pizza, pizza here? But no, it's his own chain. And so he tells me I got to get pizza, pizza. I was like, all right, Why? Or is the pizza that good? He goes, well, you're from the States and you've had better pizza, I can promise you. But their garlic, they have this creamy garlic sauce. And I will go there and I will buy this. I will go there only to buy this sauce. I'll buy like 20 packets to bring them home for the family. You have to try the creamy garlic sauce from Pizza Pizza. I was like, oh, okay. So then I asked a coworker the same deal. And she's like, eh, the pizza's not very good, but that sauce is good. Sometimes I just buy the sauce. I'm like, okay, all right, okay. So I ordered it the other night, and they delivered it. Pizza, pizza. And I also ordered uh, some breaded wings. I was filling wings for some reason. Tried the sauce. First of all, the pizza sucks. It tastes like cardboard. In fact, the day after, because I hate wasting food, I decided not to go out. I just had a, like almost a whole pizza left over and a bunch of chicken wings. So I just like scraped the topping off the pizza and ate that left the crust. That's gross, right? It was spicy sausage, uh, Canadian bacon, of course. Although I don't know why they just don't call it bacon. 
because I'm in Canada, and cheese, and a little bit of sauce. That's all. That's it. I had a little bit of the like the crust, but I found that when you eat it cold, it was better because when I warmed the first piece up, it turned back into cardboard. But I also ordered this uh, sriracha creamy garlic sauce for the wings. Overrated. The creamy garlic and the sriracha creamy garlic overrated. I feel like it's something you have to be raised with. It's not terrible. It's just not to die for. If that makes sense. In fact, Papa John's has like this, you know, the Papa John's garlic butter, which is underrated. I use it sometimes when I make uh, like leftovers, when I make fried rice, I'll put that in there. They also have one now that's kind of spicy garlic. That shit is good. This creamy garlic, it's okay. Not worth the hype. One last thing I learned about out here is I, you know, finally the currency exchange thing is they got rid of the penny. When I was a kid, my dad used to always bring me like foreign currency. And so I had like the Canadian penny. They don't do that anymore because it costs more to make the penny than the penny is actually worth. So they got rid of it. So it's like every time I go somewhere, like when I go to Tim Hortons, I buy coffee, large Americano. It always comes with two ninety three. I give him three dollars, no change. So it's like the system is kind of f- f- working you over, right? You don't have an opportunity to round up. They just take it. Now I didn't want my seven cents back, but it's something I noticed. Like I can't get a nickel, and we will just consider the two cents a wash. Thought that was interesting. Well, I think I should probably wrap this up. It is, uh, it's 1.15 in the a.m. here, and I have to get up at 6-ish so I can uh, shower and shave so I can be at work at 7. And afterwards, I'm going to go over to Toronto and see my wife, which I haven't seen in a couple of weeks and usually doesn't bother me, but now I'm like, God, I kind of miss her. I mean, I miss, you know, I mean, obviously I miss Izzy, my dog, and my grandson, but you know, happy wife, happy life. I want to thank Wright Honda and Wright Toyota at Scottsdale, Arizona, Cell Shop Wireless Services, Fountain Hills Motorsports, Kuya Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida, Pell Construction out of Caledonia, Michigan. I want to thank all my Patreons. I am going to upload some bonus coverage from a few weeks ago that I forgot to post. And also, also when I get done with this, I'm going to also record an update that I'm going to post that's going to be newer. For the aforementioned good news. Can't wait to get home. There's a lot of orders that I need to fulfill. The shirts didn't arrive in time before I had to leave. So for that, I apologize. But it's coming. You follow me on Instagram at jfinning. That's J-H-A-E-P-F-E-N-N-I-N-G. Name is in the show as well, if I did that too fast. Or jtravels, J-H-A-E underscore travels. Join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. Subscribe to my YouTube, please. YouTube.com, Hard Parking Podcast. Should have a video at some point in the next three years of this Ford Explorer. Had a lot of fun filming it. Did not have an external microphone, so it's not going to be as good audibly, but no one fucking cares anyway. The number one thing is I can't grow without you telling the world how good the show is. So let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I am back home next week. Shut up!